Trim sheets are very useful when adding details to your models. No need to actually physically model or sculpt details into your object or go through preparing high and low poly models. I think it's especially useful when making hard surface models. You can of course make trim sheets using Blender, but Substance Painter already has a lot of resources, so I'll show you how to make one in Substance for those of you who already have the program. This tutorial assumes you already have a pretty good grasp of Substance Painter. This is not a beginner's tutorial, so you'll get extremely frustrated if you're not ready to watch it. Having said that, let's get started. I exported a plane, 20 by 20 that had about 100 subdivisions as an FBX in Blender first. Open up Substance and press File New. Then choose PBR Metallic Roughness Alpha Test as the template. Click on Select button and bring in the FBX file you've prepared. Press OK. I'm gonna delete this layer and add a fill layer. Alt click on color to make it the only channel active. Choose any color you want. Right click to add a black mask. I'm gonna press Ctrl D four times to make duplicates. Let's name these line, stripes, holes, normal and base. Then go back to each layer and change colors. It's time to click on the mask and drag areas using polygon fill. We're going to divide the plane into sections so think of it as a process of color coding. You need to think in advance and plan well. I'm going pretty fast since this is just a tutorial to show you how each step is done. Now comes the important step. Right click on each mask and add an anchor point. Anchor points are very powerful because you can assign certain materials and effects to that specific area. Think of them as easy access points. Put them in a folder when you're done. Let's start with a line. Add a fill layer and Alt-click on Height. I'm going for minus 0.5. Add a black mask and click on projection to drag in the square round border to the grayscale slot. Press S and use right mouse button to scale and middle mouse button to move. I'm changing these settings for my line. You can use a different method to make your line if you want. Delete this alpha brush if you want a hard line. Now the line's done. Let's duplicate the line layer to make stripes. We need to clear the mask first. This time right click on the mask and add a fill. Search for stripes and drag it to grayscale. Adjust pattern settings to your liking. When you're done, add another fill and when you click on this grayscale button, you'll see anchor points. Click on it and choose stripes mask. Then change the blend mode to multiply. For our holes layer, let's duplicate the stripes layer. Change the anchor point to the holes mask and let's drag in tile generator this time. I'm going to choose Paraboloid for pattern type and adjust these settings.
let's turn on the opacity channel and lower it all the way to zero. I want the holes to be bigger, so I'll have to adjust the position. Oops, not the rotation, the position. For our normals, add a layer by clicking this brush button. The channels we want are normal and opacity. When you click on this textures button, you'll see a bunch of normals that look blue and purple that are ready to use. We're just going to stamp them on. Drag in one that you like to both normal and opacity channels. I don't want this soft edge look so we'll right click and delete the alpha. Adjust the size and click in the normals area. Try anything you want and stamp away. This next step might be confusing but do your best to follow along. Since I'm gonna use these normals as decals in Blender, I need another anchor point besides the one accessing this area in order to extract alpha. First step is adding levels to the normals layer. Choose opacity for affected channel and let's change our view to opacity as well so we can see what we're doing. Then drag this input maximum slider almost all the way to the left like this. Go back to material view and right click to add an anchor point to our normals layer. Like I said before, we need to be able to access this area as well so let's make a folder and drag our normals layer in it. Then add a black mask to the folder, add a fill to the mask and choose normal mask for anchor point. Next add a fill layer above our normals layer. Alt click on the opacity channel and move the slider all the way down to zero. Add a mask, add a fill and this time choose normals, not the normal mask, for anchor point. Then choose Opacity for Reference Channel, choose Extract Alpha for Alpha Behavior, and click the Invert button under Levels. We're basically almost done so hang in there guys, let's hide our color code folder and add materials to the areas we've worked on. We're not going to use Smart Materials so click on this Materials button and start with the line area. I'm gonna drag this plastic matte pure material above the line layer. Add a black mask, add a fill, and choose line mask for anchor point. Repeat the process for other areas. I want this iron rough material on both the normals and the base layer, so let's add another fill to it. Make sure you change the blend mode to linear dodge add to apply the material to both layers. We're finally done. Hooray! Go to File, Export Textures, and choose your output directory. I'm gonna choose Blender for output template and change my texture size to 2048 and click on Export. Let's jump into Blender and see what our trim sheet is capable of. I'm gonna add a cube and bevel these edges in edit mode. I'll add loop cuts to these parts for even distribution of faces. Right click to shade auto smooth, and for our alpha area to work right, I have to change render engine to EV to set the blend mode. Let's add a material and change the blend mode. You know what? I might as well add a subsurf modifier for smoother look. Now go to shading workspace and make sure you have the principled BSDF node selected and press Ctrl Shift T to bring in the textures we've exported from Substance. You do need the Node Wrangler add-in enabled to use this shortcut. We'll take a look at our trim sheet in UV Editing Workspace. I'll choose my normal texture so I can see better where the UV maps should be placed. I'm gonna Smart UV Project first. Let's put them in the base area to see how that works out.
Looks pretty good. Let's see how our line area will look. Select this middle face loop and Smart UV Project it again. Then right click and choose Follow Active Quads. Rotate and place it in the line area. We'll select the rest, scale, and place it in the line area as well. Let's test our stripes and holes area too. Looks pretty good doesn't it? To be able to have these details without modeling any of it is awesome I think. Let's unwrap again to test our decals. Select these faces and separate selection. I'll have to move it a bit outward. You can test and see which render engine looks better. I'm just showing you how it looks using EV for the display's sake. Hope this tutorial was helpful and if you find it so, please leave a like and subscribe. Thanks for watching and see you soon.